Hi, this is Eric of Ion Software and welcome back to our courseware. Today we're going to talk about using the 3D workspace in Fusion. So what you learned so far is that when you drag any tool into the viewport it will be displayed. Let's go for a background in this case. So how would you turn a 2D viewport into a 3D viewport? Well that's quite easy in Fusion. Let's add a tool, in this case a Shape 3D. And as soon as you drag a 3D tool into your viewport, the viewport automatically changes into a 3D viewport. Navigating in 3D is quite similar to the way it works in 2D. So with your middle mouse button, you can pan left, right and up, down. With the middle and the left mouse button, you can zoom in and out. And with the middle mouse button and the Alt key, you can rotate around your scene. What we have here is one of the uh, simple primitives that come with Fusion. You can also import FBX models from other applications, but that will be covered in a later tutorial. So the 3D shapes in Fusion can be planes, cubes, sphere, cylinders, cones, toruses, or icosahedas. And what you also see is when you use a 3D viewport, the buttons underneath the viewport do change. So from the normal set of buttons we have in a 2D viewport, those in the 3D viewport look a little bit different. First off, you can switch on the lighting in your scene, which will place a default light if there's no light in your scene, or will display the influence your lights have on your objects. You can also switch to wireframe mode, and you can also switch on shadows or switch off shadows if you have any shadow casting lights. And you can also switch from fast shading to full shading mode. You can switch on quad view for those of you who like to work in a quad view environment. You have your stereo options down here, which means that you can work in stereo directly in your 3D viewport. You have your well-known AB split buttons here and your zoom controls. Let's build a little 3D scene and in this case I just add a duplicate 3D tool and I'm going to use the jitter function in this case create a couple of copies like so. Let's go back to the initial shape for a moment. In the control step you can not only change the way your shape looks, you can also set the level of subdivision which is best judged in wireframe mode and you have controls for the visibility so you can create objects that are unseen by the camera, you can cull the back face, cull the front face you can switch on if these objects are affected by lights or not, if they cast shadows, if they receive shadows. You can also make them into matte objects, which means that they are actually subtracted from the current scene, and you can set their blend modes. There are two different blend modes here, one for the OpenGL renderer, I will explain that later on, and one for the software blend mode. In the OpenGL blend mode, you have additive, subtractive, and accumulate, and the software blend mode all those blend modes you know from the merge for example. To better see which influence these blend modes have it makes sense to go to your materials tab. By default the shape uses a very basic material, it's a blind shader in this case, but you can attach different materials using Fusion's material system as well. Again that will be covered in a later tutorial. In the basic blind shader you can set the color, the alpha channel, and of course the opacity of your materials. And if we bring down the opacity, you see that now the blend modes, in this case in OpenGL, actually make sense. Back to the materials tab, you can also set if this material receives lighting and shadows or if it should be two-sided, which again shows up best if we have a opacity smaller than one. You can also set the material ID, the transmittance when you're working with uh, shadow casting lights and the values for 
the specular highlight as well. Let's bring up the opacity again and add a second shape 3D. Actually let's just copy and paste our original shape then connect the output of the shape with the output of the duplicate 3D and very much the same as it works in the 2D environment Fusion automatically creates a merge 3D to bring our two objects together. Let's make this a sphere. If we go to the 3D widget here, you can set the position of your objects, the rotation, also including the rotation order. You can set the pivot point and scale it. You can even scale it independently in X, Y and Z. Let's bring this back to default. Another option is to use a target. Using a target is a valuable option if you for example want an image plane to always face a camera. So you would link the target of the image plane to the camera's position and wherever the camera moves the orientation of the object will follow. Another button you see here is the pick button. The pick button actually allows you to pick the position from a 3D scene or for example from a 2D image which contains a world pass. So to do that you obviously have to view a downstream tool, in this case the duplicate 3D and I just hold my left mouse button and then I pick the position of my new object of the sphere directly here in my viewport. The same works for the pivot point and other XYZ controls as well. Let's go back to the controls tab here switch back to a single viewport and add a camera to our scene. Again there are different ways to add cameras. One of them is obviously to just hit control space type camera 3D and add it to our scene. In this case the camera is created at the default position which is 000. If you want to view through the camera right click where it says perspective and switch to camera 3D1. Right now it's grey because the camera is sitting right in the middle of our objects. To move a camera like that you can either view the scene in your second viewport and move the camera around or you can do it interactively directly in your viewport the same way as you would navigate through a perspective viewport. That means middle click to pan around, middle and left to zoom out, middle and alt to rotate your camera. For example, like so. Let's switch back to our original perspective viewport for a moment. A second method of adding a camera is to take the camera icon from up here and drag and drop it on your active 3D viewport. If you let go of the mouse, Fusion will not only create a camera and connect it to your 3D merge, it will also set the current viewport to be the viewport of the camera and also switches to the newly created camera. So whenever you have a viewport that has been created in perspective view and you want to have exactly that view for your camera, just take your camera, drop it on the view and there you go with the newly created camera which takes the exact same position as the perspective viewport you created earlier. There's one more thing missing and that is lighting. Right now we only have the default light active but that will not be rendered. So to render an actual light we have to add one and in Fusion's 3D system you have the choice between ambient light, directional light, point light and spotlight. Let's take a simple point light in this case as we will talk about lighting again in a later tutorial and let's move this around a little bit to adjust my lighting. As a side note you will see a difference here between the Merge 3D and the 2D Merge in Fusion and that is that the Merge 3D is actually a multi-merge and can have as many inputs as needed. The final thing in your 3D setup would be a 3D render. Let's add that and view it in our viewport and the first thing we see there is no light active. 
that is because the default setting of the renderer 3D is to disable lighting. So let's enable lighting and you will see a lot here. However, this is not exactly the camera I wanted to render. In the control step of the 3D renderer, you will find a camera drop down. This allows to switch between the cameras in the scene. So in this case, let's switch to camera 3D3, which is the camera I wanted to use. Since Fusion is a node-based editor, that also means that you can have as many 3D renderers as you like. And for example, use one to render one camera, use the other one to render the other camera, or if you do stereoscopic productions, use one renderer to render your left eye, the other one to render your right eye, or use only one renderer to render a stacked image. Let's get rid of this guy here and go back to the controls tab. You will also see a drop-down renderer type and this allows you to switch between software renderer and OpenGL renderer. Depending on your graphics card, the OpenGL renderer offers a much faster throughput of data. It also comes with some additional options. Like for example, super sampling, which only works in high quality mode. So let's activate high quality here and enable super sampling and you will see much nicer edges here. You can also use accumulation effects. Accumulation effects, for example, are depth of field. Let me switch off the checkerboard in the background here. And bring up the quality, maybe like that. So you see that the depth of field is rendered almost instantly on your graphics card. Let's have a look at our original scene here and at our camera. And what you see is that in my camera's controls tab, I also have a reveal for control visibility. For example, I can set my plane of focus to be visible as well. That again means when I control my focal length, or in this case my plane of focus, I can actually see where the plane of focus lies. And uh, as you can see in the left view here, which is the output of the OpenGL renderer, that's very fast and very intuitive to set your focal point for any depth of field effects. This concludes our introduction to the 3D workspace in Fusion. There's more to come, so stay tuned.